today I'm going to show you how to draw an ellipse and how to calculate eccentricity. An ellipse is basically an object's orbit around the sun, and eccentricity is how round or how flat that orbit's going to be. To get started, you're going to need a surface to push the pins into. What you're looking at is something called homosote that's easily bought at Home Depot. You need a string roughly about 20 centimeters in length, tie it in a loop, a couple push pins, calculator, and a ruler that has a centimeter scale on it. What I've done here with my paper, we're going to do two of these, is I folded it two times. So my paper comes up with two creases, and the two creases intersect right in the middle of my paper. This will ensure that my ellipse will stay on my paper. We're going to start out with a focal distance of two centimeters. So what we do is from the center of my paper, I'm going to measure one centimeter to the left and one centimeter to the right. My left point, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to make that the sun. Label that the sun. This is F1, and this is F2. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your push pins, and you're going to put them into your focal points. You want to leave a little space in between the paper and the bottom of the push pin. So this way, you can take your string and your string will stay underneath the tack head. Take your marker or take your pen, pencil, whatever and go ahead and draw your lips. Keep that string nice and tight. So There's my lips. Looks pretty round but we want to mathematically figure this out. So here's what we're going to do. Off the front page of your reference table you have an equations box. Eccentricity equals distance between the foci divided by the length of the major axis. So this right here, that is your D. That's going to be your distance between your foci. E equals D over L. E equals 2.0, because that's what we determined, centimeters, divided by the length of my major axis. My major axis is going to be the widest part of my ellipse. That's going to be my L, my major axis. So it looks like, and you always want to go to the nearest tenth of a centimeter, looks like this is going to be about 17.4 centimeters. Centimeters cancel out. There's no units with eccentricity. Let's take your calculator. Two divided by 17.4. That's going to give me an eccentricity of 0 0.1149425. You always go to the thousands place. 0 0.114, that's three decimal places, but remember your rounding rules. The nine in the ten thousands place is going to make that four into a five. So my eccentricity on this ellipse is 0 0.115. All right? So we're going to take this ellipse and we're going to draw a second one and we're going to compare them. This ellipse, we're going to make this a focal distance of 6. So from the center, I'm going to measure 3 centimeters on either side. Three centimeters on either side. I'm going to make one a little bit bigger. I'm going to make that the sun. I'm going to label this one F1. Label this one F2. Take your push pins. Put a push pin into F1. Put a push pin into F2. Okay, put your string around the tacks and go ahead and draw. Okay, it comes out pretty well. Take your string off. Okay, let's figure out the eccentricity to this one. E equals D over L. Again, F1 to F2, that's going to be my D. So my E equals D over L. Obviously my distance is going to be 6 centimeters in this case. I'm going to divide that by my major axis. 
My major axis is going to be the long line that I just drew. Round that to the nearest tenth, measure it to the nearest tenth. It's about 13.4 centimeters. So that's going to equal 6 divided by 13.4. Turns out to be 0 0.447 Remember, we go to three decimal places, no units with eccentricity. 447, but the 7 in the 10 thousandths place makes it 7 in the thousandths place. Bump it up to an 8. 0 0.448. So now we have two eccentricities to compare. We have an eccentricity of 0 0.115 and an eccentricity of 0 0.448. So you need to understand what these numbers mean now. The bigger the number, the more flattened it's going to become. So the second ellipse that we drew is very flat. The first ellipse that we drew is a little bit rounder. When an, when an ellipse is going to be flat, we say it has a high eccentricity. When an object is somewhat round, we say it has a low eccentricity. We say that this one is because it's flat, is highly elliptical. We say the round one is slightly elliptical. What determines this is how far your focal points are going to be if your focal points are close together or if they're going to be far apart. Focal points are far apart. Your round ellipse focal points are close together. So there's a big, big difference between the shape of the orbits here. Now, with this being the sun, with F1 being the sun, the object, as it orbits around the sun, it's going to travel around the fastest where it's going to be closest to the sun, and that's going to be right there at that X. Okay, that's where a position called perihelion. Perihelion just means it's going to be very close to the sun. Okay, position farthest away from the sun is called aphelion. It's going to be a little bit farther away. And we can do that on both of our ellipses. This is where it's going to travel the fastest because that's where it's closest to F1, which is my sun. This is perihelion. And this is aphelion over here. So make sure you know the difference between your ellipses. Make sure you understand the differences in characteristics. The idea behind the shape of the orbit is that when we talk about numbers, the eccentricity, the eccentricity itself talks about the shape of the orbit. Okay, the numerical value is going to tell you the shape of the orbit in this case. When it's really small, it's going to be very round. When your eccentricity is a little bit bigger, it's going to be a little bit flatter. And that all comes down to the idea that the focal points are either far or close together.